Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show. We're back with a fresh episode, episode 801, after yesterday's crazy mantra that I threw out there. I am very excited to have an alumnus with us. Doreen Olive is on the show. She is back. We're going to be talking about cancer, cancer awareness, the greatest wealth is health. And we also have, as a new guest, Karen Ingalls on the show today, and we're going to be talking about their journey. And hopefully we'll have Dr. Holloway pop on uh, when he is ready on his break. So welcome to you both. And thank you for coming on the show and talking about how this very, very important topic. So Doreen, I'm going to start with you. And then I'd love for you to introduce Karen to us. Uh, tell, us a little bit, tell us a little bit about your journey again and who you are for those people who didn't catch the show back in October. Absolutely. So on August 23rd, 2019, I was uh, diagnosed with ovarian cancer very, very unexpectedly uh, during my hysterectomy. So uh, that obviously led me to a complete change in my life. And um, so, so obviously I just celebrated one year uh, cancer anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> And uh, through actually that whole journey, I was introduced through Dr. Holloway to Karen, and uh, she was able to certainly be a support to me, and uh, I was able to ask her a lot of questions of things that I wasn't sure what I was going to be encountering, and when I was encountering things, you know, and of course everybody's experience and, and um, uh, what they endure, what I've learned through all this is so, so completely different. Each person, you know, how they react to the chemo and the side effects and those sort of things. So yes, um, yes. on that note, I'll let Karen share a little bit about her story. Yes, Karen, welcome to the show. I am excited to hear how you fit into all this journey and how you got here. So welcome. Well, thank you. And thank you, Ted, for having both of us. And when Dr. Holloway comes, it's we have a very important message. And I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2008. So I'm celebrating 12 years. Congratulations. I have two recurrences, but I'm three years, three and a half years in remission from the second recurrence. <clears throat> and I'm a retired registered nurse. And I knew nothing, nothing about ovarian cancer. So it was very exciting journey for me to learn about ovarian cancer. And my passion now is, or has been for the last 12 years, is for nurses and doctors to really know ovarian cancer symptoms and don't just say, oh, well, you're old. Oh, it's postmenopausal. Oh, you're just a woman and end up like Gilda Radner, sent from doctor to doctor to doctor. So that's my passion. And um, I'm Dr. Holloway's patient and I think the world of him. Well, I think it's so important what you just said, mm -hmm. because I feel like, like even with my cancer, which prostate is mine, and it's usually, you know, people kind of, it's almost like the fluffed off cancer. It's pretty hilarious kind of. Um, but so even with mine, they, I had to push, I had to be my own advocate because they just, I had no other symptoms, but one or two. And I'm like, I know, but let's just do the tests. And when the, when the results came back positive, they were as astounded uh, as you possibly could be. So what you're saying is you, you need for the, um, healthcare workers, the healthcare professionals, to be educated enough to not fluff it off, to listen to you all as your own best advocate. You know, why not when the woman comes in and the number one symptom, the most common symptom is bloating, which was my only symptom. And at 67, I thought, well, okay, you know, women gain weight after menopause. But if the doctors would first think, I wonder if, this could be ovarian and get a CA-125 and an ultrasound. At least rule that out before sending me home or to different physicians. And um, so that's my big advocacy. But also, secondly, women need to listen to their bodies 
and act on them. And it's sometimes intimidating, particularly if it's a male physician, yes. for us to kind of say, no, I want a CA-125. I want a pelvic exam. I want an ultrasound. That's not always easy for women to do. Was that your experience, Doreen? Or you had gone in for surgery <laughs> and had no earthly idea. Is that right? That's correct. However, what led me to that is very similar to Karen, is that I had the bloating, but because I had just been to my GYN uh, four months earlier, I had this false sense of security that, well, I was just at the doctor and nothing was discovered. So, you know, uh, maybe I am gaining a little bit of weight, but I discovered my mass actually while I was doing yoga. Um, and just every time I would do these certain poses, I kept feeling it, kept feeling it. And finally, after about two months, I said, you know what? I think I should get this checked out. And I got it checked out. Dr. Holloway said, you know, let's do a hysterectomy. But my CA-125 actually came back perfectly normal. So when I woke up from, yeah, when I woke up from the surgery to be told that I had ovarian cancer was definitely very much a, a shocker to me. So um I just remember you post, you were so good and I have to give you kudos. Every chance I get, I try to give you kudos because you were so good about updating people, whether it was painful or not about your journey. And we were talking before we went live, how critical I think that is when you can be brave enough and strong enough to go, this is important for me to share. Uh, I think you make a huge impact. I now know you as the teal lady yeah. i knew you a lot before that but uh the travel lady and all sorts of things and the funny and the happy lady but when i think of somebody who's an advocate uh even during your own pain for other people i i absolutely think of you and i know that couldn't have been easy right well it it, it wasn't but i you know we we started with the very first week of doing an, a live update and had no intentions of, of having it morph into a weekly update, but every week there was something new that I learned, either a side effect or um, what I was going to be going through as far as the treatments and and my fear of the psychological attack as time went on, knowing I was having all this poison pumped into my body. And so I was on a mission and once I started, um, no matter how bad I was feeling on that Saturday morning, it was critical for me. And I, I just, I wanted to show, I wanted to be raw and real. So I wanted everybody to see even the painful days and the days that I was, you know, in, in tears at times, but I wanted everybody to see because what my personal experience, the only thing I've ever related with people who have had cancer is that, you know, they can get tired after their chemo or they may, you know, throw up, you know, have that type of sickness, but that was really all that I had ever heard. And so there is so much more that's happening behind the scenes. And I just wanted, again, I just want people to see and, and really understand and, um, and I can reach out and ask me questions because I love sharing the story and educating people. So, is and that what you do, Karen, at Dr. Holloway's office? Are you like an advocate, liaison, kind of education person? Explain kind of what your role is. Yeah, I um, well, I wrote a book about <clears throat> my journey with ovarian cancer, and I have done a number of workshops one for a pharmaceutical company, one individually. I've started three support groups in the Lake County, Sumter County area. I have a blog, I'm writing about it all the time. And I'm like Doreen, it's important for women, but anybody who hears the word cancer, we all immediately think death. And that's not true. That is not true. Yes, there's a high incidence with ovarian, but the statistics are becoming more and more in our favor. Why is that? Uh, better chemotherapy, better surgical techniques, and the education that women are paying attention to now. You know, you think that, well, you're too young, but you think back 50 years ago, women never palpated their breasts. There was no such thing as mammograms. 
and women were dying of breast cancer all the time. Now, unfortunately, with ovarian, there is no reliable test and there is no way to check ourselves. But the education, if we have any of the symptoms, if we act on them within two weeks, our mortality rate decreases because it's treatable. So, and yet there are women that are stage three C and four that are surviving 20, 25 years. And I do believe it's better techniques and better chemotherapy. I want to add, go ahead, when, I'm sorry. When I was, before I was diagnosed, and I've been always a very holistic person, I said, I'm never going to get chemotherapy. Uh uh, that is poison. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be Suzanne Summers. Yes, of course. And like Doreen, I did not anticipate this diagnosis. <clears throat> and when I woke up and the next day, the doctor came in and he told me and he said, you're going to need chemotherapy. I said, when can we start? I didn't blink an eye. I didn't hesitate. So chemotherapy certainly has its side effects and it does have some issues. But all in all, it's the best recourse. It's it's interesting because I had mine was radiation, and I stage one. Um, and it's funny, I almost felt guilty because people associate radiation and chemo. I've talked about this on the show several times. I didn't lose any weight, folks. Um, <laughs> I wasn't getting sick. I didn't feel nauseous very much. And so people are like. Now you're you're still going through treatment, right? So it's different for each person, but I love the fact that you talk about how the advocacy of your own self is so important. What were some of the symptoms or what are some of the symptoms specifically to ovarian cancer that you all put out there to let people know, hey, these are some things you should look for if you're feeling this. Well, certainly bloating and Doreen can chime in on this is, as I said, the most common symptom, something like 70% of us have that. Um, back pain, pelvic pain, abdominal pain, change in urination, bowels, um, inability to eat a meal like you used to, and now your plate's getting smaller, you know, um, feeling full too soon. Do you want to pick up from there, Doreen? I don't want to. You know, I, I think you hit on the main ones that are um, that people are able to identify with. Uh, I'm not sure that there's really any others, but uh, and, and that's why, you know, it, it's so hard to detect because, you know, when you feel a little bit of cramping or pain, you know, you, you don't think a lot about it because you just think, OK, well, you know, maybe I have to go to the bathroom or you know, maybe this is just a, a menstrual cramp or something. So. Um, that, that's why you really, really have to pay very, very close attention. And and when you do go to your doctor, um, you know, like Karen said, you know, women for uh, breast cancer, we have mammograms, but we don't have anything for ovarian cancer. And I really think we should start testing for CA125, doing the blood work, and as well as uh, doing the pelvic ultrasound, because those are the two things that can certainly help identify or make you go to the next step to get checked further. What would be the objection from a doctor to just do that test? Do you, do you all recommend the ovarian uh, cancer uh, community? Is the recommendation to have it at a certain age or only wait till you have symptoms? You know, women get mammograms before they have symptoms. They're constantly checking. Uh, is that what the C, is it C125? I'm sorry, the, the, the blood test. Um, do they push back on that? Are they not wanting to run that as sort of a preventative, let's take a look? It's all insurance. Yeah. <laughs> it's insurance it's driven. Not so. expense, it's not an expensive test. You could say, I want it done and find a lab, but then to have the doctor read it and follow through is another issue. Right. I don't think women need to have a CA-125 or a the pelvic ultrasound, unless they're showing one of the symptoms. Two other symptoms I want to touch on, the extreme fatigue that goes on day after day after day. And one of our 25 year survivors, that was one of her main symptoms, was extreme fatigue. 
So um, we can't ignore anything. Um, I think if, if I had my life to live over again, knowing what I know now, and I would present to a doctor, hey, I'm, I'm bloating, yeah, I'm 67, yeah, I'm postmenopausal. I would just say, I'm not leaving this exam room until you do these two things. Good for you. I also believe, and I know the GYN community doesn't agree with me, I strongly believe every woman, no matter her age, should have a pelvic rectal exam every single year. Now, pap smears are only for cervical. That's the only one. So a lot of women say, well, I had my pap smear. It was normal. Oh, yeah, I've got this pain. I've got this. And they ignore it. So I know Doreen and I and the other survivors are really hoping to get the word out. The CA or the um, pelvic exam getting the pap smear is only for cervical. Well, that's it's interesting because I when we started this last year, when we were talking about teal and talking about ovarian cancer awareness, um, somebody said to me after the show, well, I get my pap smear done every year and i only knew enough from the show to know that wasn't the answer and i said yeah but that's only for cervical but beforehand i would have been like okay mm -hmm. i mean that makes sense to me because i was not educated and i think women need to educate themselves they really need to and push back you said it earlier karen i think it's so important we're, we're intimidated by our physicians. We are intimidated. It is difficult for us to be an advocate, but I can tell you that you are your best advocate. And if you can't find the right doctor, speaking of doctors, hold on just a second. Mm -hmm. Perfect timing, Dr. Holloway. We were just saying, speaking of doctors. <laughs> Good afternoon, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the show, Dr. Holloway. I know your time is limited. So please introduce yourselves and tell us how you know these amazing women. Uh, well, I, uh, I know them both as patients and friends uh, uh, over time, over long periods of time uh, with Doreen and actually pretty long period of time with Karen now. So I'm a GYN oncologist at Advent Health Orlando and uh, have, have had them both uh, in my practice for management of ovarian cancer over the years. So let me ask you, we were just talking about physicians and how patients um, tend to be intimidated. So as a physician, what would you say to help a patient who may be intimidated by their doctor, but really, really wants to pursue something because in their minds, their hearts, their bodies, they know something's up. So you're really talking about, um, yeah, someone who's not been diagnosed and, and is having um, perhaps pelvic pain or other gynecologic complaints. But um, I, I think the thing that I've seen commonly, uh, even more than, well, maybe it's because of uh, anxiety about going to doctors, um, you know, you tend to make excuses in your brain about how this, oh, this couldn't be anything and, and it'll get better. And sometimes the symptoms do get better. So, you know, we don't um, encourage uh, most people with any condition to be uh, hypochondriac about it you know and every time you feel a you know a, a slight twinge of something that you rush to the doctor and get checked out for cancer but any symptom uh, really that is persistent uh, and not going away should be checked out uh, you know sooner rather than later and uh, I think you know when they've done surveys of patients with ovarian cancer the average time from symptom onset to being diagnosed is usually in the uh, 60 to 90 day range. And so it's, it's oftentimes said that it's a silent disease, that it really doesn't give you any warning and all of a sudden you've got ovarian cancer. But when they really do surveys, uh, patients on average have, um, oh, sorry, I'm being moved here. I'm out in the hallway outside of room. <laughs> pa patients have symptoms maybe for, uh, you know, three months or, or more sometimes, even up to six months. And unfortunately it often, uh, oftentimes gets confused with other diseases and you'll end up seeing three or four other physicians uh, getting different testing procedures and and unfortunately no one's ever done a simple office pelvic exam uh, which can detect an abnormality that would lead you in the direction so 
if you're having pelvic complaints of any sort, it's important to get in and see the gynecologist and get a pelvic exam before you spend $20,000 on scans. So. so let me ask you, Dorian and Karen, what is it about Dr. Holloway that makes him such an amazing physician and supporter and advocate? Oh, he really is just an amazing man. I mean, he, he listens to everything we have to say. He's very, very honest. And Karen had mentioned earlier about, you know, that she wasn't in the studio. And that was probably one of the first things that I told um, Dr. Holloway. And his response to me was, Doreen, you're going to the top of the Empire State Building. I'm going to give you a parachute. You can either take it or leave it. So um, I have always appreciated him, you know, just being very, very direct with me and uh, really having my best interest at heart. And uh, I, I asked him to please treat me as though he were treating, you know, his own daughter or family member. So yeah. it's a blessing. How about you, Karen? Well, <clears throat> he's always been very gentle, very kind. Sometimes has a few jokes. <laughs> giving a hug, and he's very educational. He really explains. Now, sometimes because I'm all kind of wrapped up in my emotions, my husband hears things better. But no matter my question or concern, he's right there, and I love his hugs. And I love him. He's great. It's so good. I mean, I hope that you hear this all the time, Dr. Holloway, but Dorian was just adamant that you come on the show. And I'm just so, it's always wonderful to have a physician um, who's willing to share their heart. And um, you obviously have made an impact on these two beautiful ladies um, in a big way, in a big heartfelt way. What do you think people should do if, what's the best way people can support or be an advocate for ovarian cancer awareness, Dr. Holloway? Well, you know, I, I think the one of the best things is just get the word out that uh, that annual pelvic exams are still important. You know, there's a lot of confusion amongst physicians as well as uh, patients. I, I oftentimes see patients over age 65 who have been told that, well, your pap smears have always been normal your entire life. You really don't need a pap smear anymore. And they interpret that as I don't really need to see a gynecologist anymore. And many family physicians actually interpret it that way. And, and the patients quit getting a gynecologic exam. So that misses the opportunity um, you know, to detect early cancers of the vulva, vagina, which are rare, but, but do happen. And then of course, uh, the pelvic exam uh, for uh, detecting an adnexal mass. Now, a pelvic exam, unfortunately, is still not a great screening tool if you look at screening cancers, and that's the big problem with ovarian cancer. We don't have a pap smear or a blood test uh, or a mammogram, so to speak, you know, for ovarian cancer. So we have to rely on uh, women um, understanding their own, uh, you know, physiology and, and feeling something is different. Um, and, you know, it might just be that, you know, the bowels are a little irregular and you've got a chronic constipation disorder and that eventually gets diagnosed. But oftentimes that can be other more serious disease. So you really shouldn't ignore any complaint in the pelvis. And, uh, you know, it's we also treat uterine cancers. And for women who aren't getting um, annual exams, they sometimes will ignore postmenopausal bleeding for prolonged periods of time. And, and that's a missed opportunity. When women present with um, early postmenopausal bleeding, it's usually a very early stage one tumor. It can be diagnosed and treated quickly with a hysterectomy. But when you let it um, go on for six months, a year, sometimes even two years, we see uh, you know, that it's had a chance to become a more involved disease. It takes a lot more therapy. So the bottom line message as a long-winded answer is keep up, with, keep, keep up with your annual pelvic exams. They're uh, simple, they're very inexpensive when you can compare it to everything else we can do in medicine and, and they can uh, diagnose an early condition, just like going to the dentist every six months and getting your teeth checked out. I mean, it's the same idea. So, so Dorian, why did, you pick, why did you pick The Greatest Wealth is Health as the title of the show? Ooh, after, after what I've gone through over the last year, that is just the most important thing to me. And, you know, I didn't realize until I've lost 
certain things as a result of this um, that my health really is is the most important thing that uh, that I can have. So it allows me to obviously do so many things in life. And um, when you don't have that, some of that's taken away from you. So yes. All right. Yeah. So Dr. Holloway, how can people find you? And then Karen and Doreen, I'll ask the same question because it's coming. We're in the month now. Yes. No. Next month, it's pink and teal and teal and all that, which I'm so excited to promote. Um, how can they find you, Dr. Holloway? Well, I mean, obviously the internet, um, you know, and I'm, I'm an employee and have been here since 1994, I guess, at now Advent Health in Orlando at the Cancer Center. Um, so we have a um, patient care coordinator that helps with uh, second opinions and new consults. We mostly see patients by referral, uh, you know, for uh, evaluation. We're not the primary screeners. Usually most women have their OBGYN or their internal medicine or family physician doc who's got a suspicion of something and then sends, uh, you know, for a consult. But, but we do still see patients who call and um, want to be seen or get a second opinion about uh, their condition. Um, we have a very active uh, clinical trials program uh, in GYN oncology and have many um, treatments that are under investigation, uh, uh, you know, through FDA approved processes for treatments that are very, you know, difficult in recurrent settings. And we see, you know, a lot of patients for second opinions about things like that. And how about, um, you, how about you, Karen? How can people reach you? Well, probably the best way is through my website. And that's Karen Ingalls home at wordpress.com. Fantastic. And last but not least, the okay. one who, who I know, tell us, Doreen, how can they reach you? Well, well, first of all, I have to say real quick, I enjoyed seeing the, the, the uh, doctors scrubbing behind Dr. Holloway there for a moment. <laughs> you, guys, you guys keep seeing uh, my AC guy in the back behind me. But <laughs> 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 anyhow, um, obviously through the internet, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook are the two primary sources. Um, I would love to see people post on their Facebook or whatever social media wearing teal for the month of September. And, and you can say, I saw it on the Ted show and I was supposed to do it. So that's why I'm doing it. And I learned a little bit about ovarian cancer. So even simple things like uh, you can get teal nail polish and do a little teal on your fingernail. So um, idea. Thank you. yes, yes. And we so appreciate you having us on the show and bringing more awareness to this, but I love when people reach out. So it's a joy. You all are a joy. Thank you so much for taking time out, Dr. Holloway, Karen, Doreen. You all, if you are experiencing anything that seems out of the norm, start the process. Don't put it at the back of your mind. We don't want the hypochondriac that Dr. Holloway mentioned. But if you have this thing and you know you're feeling something different, something's changed, don't let it sit. Reach out to Doreen or Karen or me and we'll put you in touch um they are accessible wonderful people all of you are thank you so much for everything that you do in the community all right thank, thank you very much Ted. phenomenal thank you guys so much bye everybody thank you have bye a bye. Good afternoon thank you. thanks